Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Monster Tamer News, a segment on this channel where we go over this week's happenings in the world of monster taming. Now this week we have a potential Nexomon spin-off, a brand new Kinfolk animation, a Costume Kingdom successor, a couple patch updates, and more. So with all that being said, as usual, sit back, relax, and let's dive right in. Okay, so we're gonna kick things off with some really interesting Kindred Fates news, that being the reveal of Mecking's 3D model and an animation to boot. Furthermore, Mecking was an unofficial name for the kinfolk, but now we have the official name for it being Galvalent. It sort of matches with its counterpart, Gladius, in that respect. Even more so than that, the devs also bestowed a really nice looking piece of concept art upon us in the Discord. In it, we can see a paved road and what looks like a gas station, surely where the main player's dad is located purchasing his cigarettes. To me, this piece of concept art is really important because I think a lot of people haven't really picked up on this, but Kindred Fates does take place in modern times. The trailers don't really show much of this, but if you didn't know, now you do. So we have some Anatons news that's going to make some people quite happy. The devs have decided to delay the Kickstarter, which was initially supposed to launch on October 1st, and will now launch on October 5th. This was done in order to add the Nintendo Switch stretch goal. Now I'm not 100% sure what the logistics behind the delay are, regarding uh, why it was necessary in order to ensure that this was a possibility. But with that being said, when the Kickstarter does launch, I'd love to see it hit every single stretch goal if possible, because Anatons is going to be one of those games like Kindred Fates and Mithrin, where it really revolutionizes the monster tamer genre. Next, we have some really big Costume Kingdom news. Josh from Stratton Studios joined us this past week on Monster Taming and Chill, and in it he revealed that they're working on a spiritual successor to Costume Kingdom. A lot is up in the air with regards to exactly which changes will be made and whether or not it'll be a sequel or a spiritual successor, but it's good to know that we've got more Halloween themed monster taming in store. Other than that, Costume Kingdom did release on October 1st on PS4 and is planned for release on PC later this month. I'm planning on publishing a review for it shortly, I've just been having a few issues with my PS4 capture card, hence why I haven't uploaded part 2 just yet, so stay tuned for that. We got quite a bit of Mithra news, including the first official newsletter which discussed the current progress of the project, a Q&A which spanned over a couple hours. and. Through that, we got information regarding the growth of stats, the fact that there won't be IVs, which is nice, Mithrin sentience, the geography of the world, how Mithrin are obtained, and more. We also got the reveal of Darken, some sort of evil being that exists within the Mithrin world and will act as your typical wild battle encounters. Not much is known about these creatures, but I'm looking forward to finding out more. All of this information and more can be found in yesterday's Monster Tamer Showcase episode featuring Mithrin, including that special reveal. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys. In Pokemon news, we did receive a new trailer showcasing some of what's coming to the Crown Tundra, including some sort of in-game tournament mode, including uh, past characters from Galar, the various legendaries, some more shots of the area itself, a new item that allows you to switch to your hidden ability, etc. The Crown Tundra is set to release on October 22nd. The Monster Sanctuary Kickstarter just put out an update that showcases two new monsters, the first being Satsune, a creature described as having the ability to take the lives of other monsters, and Vertag, the god of time, a crossover monster coming from the Cyrillum franchise. Now if you remember a while back, Cyrillum Ultimate had confirmed crossovers with Monster Sanctuary, Coromon, and Monster Crown, so I'm really excited to see Vertag finally make its debut. Monster Sanctuary's full access release is currently in beta mode and is slated for some time this year. A monster taming game we haven't yet covered on this channel ended up on my radar thanks to Misora. It's called Ninth Dawn 3, Shadow of Erthil. The game features real-time combat alongside over 270 monster companions to collect and fight alongside. It's somewhat in the same vein as Creature Keeper in terms of that sort of top-down combat, and honestly looks pretty awesome. It releases on October 6th for all platforms including mobile. In Re-Legend news, the official Twitter page just showcased a new Magnus for a creature called Spire. The biome listed is the Tundra, and you can see from its progression here its final form has some interesting looking butt icicles. The Patch Quest YouTube channel just uploaded a new video showcasing the addition of brand new boss fights, not to be confused with the previous large monster fights, balancing adjustments to the frequency in which both offensive and defensive skills can be executed, and a change to the power-up system with the power-ups being reduced to 5. The new effects include Ferocity which increases the mount attack damage, Reloading which increases the power and timing window of your perfect reload blasts, Pushback which increases the strength of your melee blasts, Evasion which gives you a chance to not take damage after taking a hit, and Quick Time which gives you a chance to enter bullet time after defeating an enemy. We also got two new monsters, the first being Skurret, a poison and fire type, and the second being Mantari, this awesome mantis samurai. 
The video also goes over plans for the future as well as the early access launch this winter. I highly recommend checking it out as it's very interesting to say the least. Skyseeker also had a pretty big update which includes more fauna evolutions, an overhaul to the map design, balancing adjustments, new characters, more blessings, etc. They'll be also taking part in the Steam Festival and as usual for more information check out the Skyseeker Steam page. A couple pieces of Nexomon information have come to light. Firstly, the game has sold over 125,000 copies which is awesome and the Nexomon Twitter page has been asking people what they'd like to see in terms of spin-offs for the franchise. This would likely act as something to sort of keep people tied down until the main release and though I initially thought some sort of Pokemon Stadium-esque game would be pretty grand, I feel like going to all the work to making 3D models, uh, add online functionality, and everything else that goes into that sort of title would probably end up taking just as much if not more time than the actual Nexomon 3 itself. I do plan on doing a video going over what I think would be both really interesting and more reasonable in types of spin-offs for the devs to maybe get out there between launches, so stay tuned for that. The Necromancer's GIF developer posted a weekly update to the Discord which states that dual item holding is currently progressing well, they've added sound effects for battle moves, and that half the idle animations are now implemented. He states that the elements for the alpha are starting to come together. The Twitter page also showcased the Shadow Wings evolutionary line as well as this turtle line. Like I said before, this game has some fantastic designs. In Abomination news, Carl over at Orange Pylon revealed a new Abami known as Architrip, the final form of Singwit. As expected, Architrip is basically triple what its base form is. Its ability is called Triple Threat, which increases the user's damage when you have a team of three or more Abomis. This is also the 100th Abomi animated and implemented for the game, so congratulations to Carl for that. We also got a look at a new biome known as a Swamp. This biome also comes with its own music track, so let's listen. Now speaking of music, the Druggymon dev recently showcased some of the route music, so let's take a listen to that as well. Alright, so now since we have some smaller updates, we're going to go into rapid fire mode and start banging them off one by one, so let's begin. Serlum Ultimate had a small update to version 0.4.5 which included a few minor fixes. Visionstead Studios uploaded an image of their menu for their unnamed project. The Creature Keeper Twitter showcased some interactive map properties that are planned for the game. The Moncraft developer just showcased a new wind type monster. I love the graphical style that Moncraft is going with, it reminds me of Gen 2 Pokemon. The Disc Creatures Twitter also showcased this rabbit dragon creature. Disc Creatures has a remake in the works so this is definitely noteworthy. The Ova Magica tech demo recently launched and primarily features battling as its main focus. You can also download the demo by going over to Claudia's Twitter channel which I'll link in the description. I also did an hour long playthrough of it if you want to see some gameplay. And last but certainly not least, the Monster Crown Twitter just showcased a new area of what I'm assuming is Frobeck. Getting me pretty excited for Content Pack 3, that's for sure. So yeah guys, that's the essential gist of what's going on this week. Overall, a pretty solid week with some really cool monsters and a ton of updates. Thank you guys so much for watching and make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things monster taming. Until next time, peace.